Welcome back, everyone. Toysh is here, and what a year 2022 was for action figures, and more specifically, retro action figures. That's a term that's certainly thrown around a lot these days. However, in all the retro glory that has hit the action figure market in recent years, for 2022, for me in particular, there was one clear standout. Now, this line kind of sort of started off well slash slow at the same time. You got a good playset, you got the main characters, you got a really cool vehicle, but it wasn't until 2022 where this particular line finally started to see form and function and really take off. It kind of got hindered down with a bunch of nonsensical variants in many ways, utilizing the same little pow, bam, wow accessories over and over again. However, like I just said, towards the latter half of 2022, well, this line really started to pick up steam. And as you can see, I pulled everything out, set it all up. Well, this is the way it looks on my shelf anyways, but put in all the characters this time around. Now, I'll be honest with you, a lot of these variances I did pick up on clearance. However, well, it tended to work out more often than not. And for figures that I may have not been interested in, well, you can see they certainly all go together well. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is the best retro toy line of 2022, McFarlane's Batman 66. Now, in kicking things off, as I previously mentioned, the line started off well enough, but then it got hindered down by a bunch of odd end variants. And these were the ones that I kind of left to the wayside. I was like, you know, uh, maybe I won't get into this line too much. I felt like the accessories were definitely lacking. However, on a couple trips to Target later on after they had been released, the clearance prices were too good to be true. So, that's when I picked these up, and I've had them ever since. Now, don't get me wrong. I really feel like the sculpts are there. I like the paints. I do love the articulation. This is not supposed to be an overly articulated line. This is just fancy, good old-fashioned toys that look good just posed and standing right on yourself. But I will say this. I'm glad that they're finally moving on from these odd-end variances. But there have been unmasked. There have been, well, Alfred variants, especially for 2022. There was a special Alfred dressed as Batman. And this one in particular was the actor Alan Napier. And it works and it really doesn't. It's just one of those, well, we can do the bare minimum and throw it in there. However, it really doesn't look all too bad when you have these all put on your shelf and you don't really think anything of it. It's just kind of there. However, I really would not mind a true Alfred the Butler figure. When it comes to the unmasked Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson figures, I would say the likenesses are not really there, if at all. I would say it's borderline uncanny valley, especially with Adam West, maybe more towards Burt Ward, of course. But then again, the accessories really didn't work either. This was a great way to then throw in a battering, something like that. Now, stuff that we're finally starting to see, but back then, as you can tell, yeah, it was just kind of like, well, I wish there was a little bit more in the package. But they do look all nice and neat when you have them together on your shelf. But in 2022, when talking about variances, this is when it kind of piqued my interest a little bit more. Now, as a fan of more classic and especially the black and white look of superheroes, this really caught my attention. Starting it off with Batman and going, well, this really works. And then grabbing the Joker and then, of course, McFarlane Toys sent over early samples of Frank Gorshin's Riddler and Robin. And when you have all these together, they look awesome. I really love the way that this looks. And I know a lot of people have been thinking, well, yeah, these are just variances again. Well, truth be told, with the first season of Batman 66, a lot of people had not transitioned into color television. So for a good chunk of the audience at the start, yeah, this is the way people saw Batman. Plus, it has that whole classic comic book vibe to me, which I really enjoy. There's just something special about these black and white figures. And from figures to vehicles, 
in kicking it off with the Batmobile, we now have the 66 Bat Cycle. And I'll tell you this, much like the Batmobile, the figures don't exactly fit. If you look at the Bat Cycle, though, they nailed it. From the colors to the little sidecar that Robin just kind of sits slash hovers in. No, they don't fit the best. But that, again, is, I think, why I enjoy this line. It's a line that seems to have come out in 1966, and it has a really retro classic feel to it, and I don't really mind all that much. It's got the simplistic articulation, but it also has that really cool nostalgic feel, and even though they don't look great, I mean, Robin is literally looking down at the ground. There's no head articulation there to look up. But there is something grandiose in the simplistic articulation, which totally takes me back to the 80s and the 90s and having such limited articulation, but still having a lot of fun with just toys. But with every good hero, uh, you gotta have the villains. And this is where the villains really started to come out. We had Mr. Freeze. We had Catwoman. We now have Egghead and Penguin, Riddler, King Tut. Let's keep the villains going. And of course, Joker. I mean, how many variances of Joker have we gotten? But it's really starting to take shape. All of these villains, even the newer ones like King Tut, Egghead, Two-Face. Two-Face being not from the TV show, but from the comic book continuation of recent years. They all look glorious together. This is so much fun to see on your shelf, to have all these retro-styled, brightly colored villains wreaking havoc, or let's be honest, just kind of standing around, plotting, maybe getting into the occasional fights, and then going home, or whatever they did. You know what I mean? Like, it's nonsensical world, but man, oh man, the color pops on these, and the sculpts are absolutely beautiful. But then, in taking all these villains, you need a place to put them. And the villain's lair for 2022 is just exceptional. It is so simple, but effective. Little chairs, a table. You have all these background elements. You have a couple accessories. You even got Penguin's umbrella, Catwoman's statue. And I know I still have to put this updated correct decal sticker on from online, right? I'll put a link down in the description below so you can add one to your set as well. The background's not correct, but that's DC Comics for you these days. But just in seeing all these villains all around the table, discussing their crimes, talking about I almost got them, right? In so many ways, for the most part, all the villains fit unless you got coattails, egghead, penguin, joker, I'm looking at you, but they just look oh so good. And again, in building out the Batcave and now building out the villain's lair, man oh man, it just looks so friggin' cool on your shelf. Now, before we wrap things up, one more element that I want to talk about and discuss about the Batman 66 line, specifically in this ever-changing action figure market, is the price of these figures, the vehicles, and the playset. All priced affordably and just at that sweet spot. Too much, and it's a done deal. And the only four figures not in this video is the Target-exclusive Lunchbox tin with some of the overseas Japanese variants figures. And those will be ones I do have plans to get, but I will be waiting on clearance for those. I have so many of the variances already, that's kind of one where you have to look at it and go, well, I'll just play the waiting game. But again, it's affordable. It's awesome. You really build out the world of Batman 66. And again, I could not be happier. But as always, I'm curious to know what you guys think. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Batman 66 by McFarlane Toys. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, thank you so much for watching all of my videos all throughout 2022. I can't wait to see what's in store for 2023. Same bat time, same bat channel. Let's hop in the Batmobile and let's go.